Hello my soccer universe. Well, I had a pretty nice uh, afternoon yesterday. First we went to the last game, which Lask do live on. We'll talk about that next week. I decided not to do Austria. Then I uh, watched the World Cup final in the Ice Hockey Championships. Canada won over Germany, so that scare went off. And then in the evening, pretty much the same time as uh, Canada beating Germany, Milan went to Turin and beat Juventus 1-0. Two wins over Juve in a row. Top four secured. Rossoneri across the world. Breathing a sigh of relief. Honestly. Because that was the minimum goal. And it is achieved. And so overall you can look back at a season. And think. Yeah. Okay. I think it was not so bad. However. The one thing is. It needed a 10 points penalty for Juventus. Otherwise this goal would not have been achieved. Uh, from a Juve point of view, though, I have to say, having beaten Juve twice in a season, I think Milan deserve it, although Juve were probably, or the general, probably the better team in Serie A, despite all the troubles that they're having. But when it comes down to between those two, if I look at head-to-head, -head, okay, it, it looks okay. Um, going back to Juve also... I mentioned it last week that, in a way, I didn't realize how, when the 10 points penalty was uh, communicated. It really seemed like it was communicated right ahead of the start of the game with Allegri saying, we went into the locker room being second, we went out of it uh, to start the game and we were in seventh. And that, of course, uh, was a big downer for Juve. So yeah, not a great timing by Serie A, honestly. Maybe one could have done this decision on a Tuesday. But, you know, worked out all fine for Milan, so I'm not, I'm not the one complaining here. However, I do question a little bit, um, how to say, the motives uh, <laughs> that were happening there. Uh, but, that's personal for me the biggest result, but there are two more that I think are much bigger. The one, of course, is that we have the first title given out, I mean... Theoretically, Napoli are already changed the champions, but the trophy ceremony, we're still waiting for that one. Uh, but Inter won the Coppa Italia final against Fiorentina. It was a teeny bit shaky um, it, it, as well. However, I have to say the two goals scored by them and what they showed in the first half uh, towards two to end, how, how they reacted was really, really cool. It was just that I think then the, um, when they made the substitutions, that a little bit... Um, took the steam out of um, Inter and that is something to look for for the Champions League final because I know Inter uh, Inzaghi likes to pre-plan his changes and I think they responded well to Fiorentina who are not, play, are not of the quality of Manchester City but play a very similar style they were under pressure, they weathered that storm despite being, being, being only 1-0 nil, nil down then they reacted rather quickly and then in the end it was hanging on. And yeah, we gotta see. And then also we have uh, a first decision in the relegation battle where Lecce are safe getting a win at Monza, fellow promoted teams. So we have two promoted teams already staying up. The third one, Cremonese, who came uh, uh, came through in second last season. They are going down. But two out of three, that's not so bad. Uh, however, it also has, as we said, that Verona definitely threw that one away. I would say we'll start in Rome with the Coppa Italia final. Big occasion, uh, great fan uh, tifos and so on. I really enjoyed that one. It was, of course, it meant more for Fiorentina because they had not won a title since 2001. Uh, and though Italiano said if he could choose between Rome and Prague, he would go for Prague, meaning the Conference League, because it has a little bit more value. I think if they would have gotten that one out of the way, it would not have been uh, hurt, hurt them so much. And Nico Gonzalez very quickly gave them a lead in the third minute. And I think for the 10 minutes coming, I really thought that Fio Fiorentina are going to take it all to uh, Inter. And gonna play circles around them. However, Inter could settle that one, and then there was a brilliant pass by Brozovic through the defense to Lautaro Martinez, who uh, scores the equalizer in the 29th. And then Inter was on top, uh, and there was a situation where Fiorentina cannot really clear the ball. The ball comes out to Barella, crosses it in, and the way Lautaro Martinez converts it, the, the way he strikes it out of the air. Uh, 
from a really hard angle, I mean, it's a brilliant goal to give into the 2-1 lead. And I have to say at that point, I really felt that Inter is going to actually cruise to that. And I said it already in the opening that I think it is the changes that kind of a little bit unsettled. I mean, Jacob was not happy come coming off for Lukaku. The Bastoni had to also come off because he was on the yellow. Uh, so Stefan de Vrij came on. Uh, but a little bit, the momentum got lost right there. And Fiorentina came a knocking and had a few chances. And of course, who is missing? Jovic uh, was missing quite, quite, quite a few there, there as well. I think uh, equalizer for Fiorentina would not have been undeserved uh, in the end that this goes to overtime. I can see that Inter were the better team in there. Of course, I really wanted to Fiorentina to win that one. But uh, congratulations, Inter, again. So you defended the Coppa Italia title and that's the, that's one of two competitions that just elude Milan that Inter actually uh, keep winning as the Coppa Italia and that's the, what's now the Europa League, the UEFA Cup, uh, which I find always quite interesting. But yeah, it was an entertaining cup final um, as let Lati, uh, it was a head to head between two European finalists and it was not the only one this week. Going over to Serie A, uh, what seemingly was a huge result in the relegation battle is that if you're in, uh, the Torino went to Spezia and won 4-0. Uh, however, it also has to be said there was some um, uh, racist abuse directed at the uh, uh, Torino coach, uh, Juric. He was, uh, you know, insulted as a gypsy and of course protocol was applied, blah, blah, blah. The thing is that this insult did not come from the ultras. This came from the stands right around the, you know, the honors. And I read a tweet from Gabriele Marcotti who said, why couldn't this guy have been removed? I mean, this is something you can figure out very, very quickly. You don't even need to hold the game for that in a way. So I one, one, wanted to mention that uh, the win for Torino came, the, the goals came, I mean, they had a 1-0 uh, lead through Vigny, Vigniewski on goal, but then uh, Ricci Illich and uh, Karamo in the last 20-20 uh, minutes make it a really, really decisive result. And at this point, uh, Spezia were kind of dangling because they knew if Verona get a win, then they are, uh, look, they are on the outside looking in um, we had also the second duel between two european finalists fiorentina against roma and this time Fior fiorentina prevail although roma really controlled the first half uh took the lead through el sharavi um i never have mentioned but roma of course digital bits is gone so the place play spqr which i find a look so great on roma jersey i would love to have a roma jersey with spqr uh blazing the car uh, across the chest Fiorentina in their new jerseys, which on, on, honestly I find a little bit weird with all the DNA print all over. But as I said, I think Roma really controlled the first, first half, but then uh, let it slide. And yes, I understand. There was not much to play for. I mean, yes, with the win, they could have put uh, Milan under pressure, but it's the Europa League that I think Roma is focusing on. And then it kind of went really Fiorentina's way. They created some more chances. Um, and in, in the end, they win it through Jovic, who actually is scoring. And then Ikone dusts it off just a few minutes later as 85th and 88th uh, to give Fiorentina a 2-1 win, meaning Roma out of the race for the Champions League through the league. Uh, uh, Inter follow up the Coppa Italia triumph, of course, full San Siro uh, with a 3-2 over Atalanta. Uh, it was after three minutes already 2-0. Lukaku really well timed and also the, the way Barella put puts it in for the It was really, really Im impressive. It could have been more than, but Pasalic makes it then 2-1. Uh, and then late on the game is decided with uh, Lukaku playing a really nice ball onto Brozovic who then sees Lattaro Martinez on the side and in the 77th makes it 3-1 uh, very late on it was is counted as an on, on, on goal uh, it was 3-2 but this was uh, rather decisive from Inter Inter I have said that before not over all of the season but maybe over the last two months Inter are looking like the best team in Italy yes they have lost to Napoli I I hear you but they play with the second string Inter really really look good will not be enough probably to win the Champions League. 
One of the biggest results was in Verona, the 1-1, uh, where Verona held a 1-0 lead. And with that win, they would go ahead of Spezia and both have really hard away games to finish out the season. So this was a really, this was a really, really big win for, for, for Verona because then you would have only needed a draw and you're kind of safe. And then Magnani on goal in the 96th minute, deep into stoppage time. You drop the points. And now it's looking grim for Verona, as we'll see when we look at the table. So that was a pretty big result. Uh, it didn't matter much, but it was uh, entertaining now. The less Bologna against Na Napoli, the first goal through Zeman. I mean, what Skorupski is doing there, he plays the ball uh, through the box straight into Ozeman, who takes it in the box and puts it in into net. Ozeman adds the second one. You think Napoli are cruising, but there has always been a fight back spirit of Bologna. Bologna is one of the underrated stories of this season. A team that is entertaining, that can actually uh, do some good results against the big teams that maybe have a little bit more trouble against the lower ones. Ferguson and lay down the Silvestri, get the equalizer. Um, and Bologna actually will finish in a credible season, but outside of Europe. Lecce, I said it already in the opener, Lecce are safe. Uh, with a late, 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 late goal through a Colomb penal, penalty, who is of course alone from from, from Milan, and what you want the Guk here for um, um, Monza missed a penalty before that. So uh, really, really big result and Lecce are safe. I'm actually happy if there are more southern Italian teams in in, in in the league because the league is definitely skewing more towards the north, having a little bit more variety. It's always good. Uh, it's not only Napoli. We have Salernitana in there. We have Lecce in there. Um, and let's see who is coming up. Uh, Frozen None could probably count as a southern team. We already know that they are promoted. So that's a uh, fun end games. And then Lazio beat Cremonese 3-2. And then the big one in Turin uh, between Juve and Milan. And it was a little bit of a weird game where I always had the feeling that if Milan would be a little bit, teeny bit more concentrated, they could have settled this game er early on. But the way it was, I mean, very often they got control of the ball, but they lost it again. And that caused some trouble then for, um, in, the, in the sense that you actually created maybe the slightly better chances. But there was never really the big chance that I will, will, will say. I always had, had, had the feeling that Milan could kick into this next gear. I also have to say, you were playing, of course, in their new jerseys, which, yeah, we have to get used to a little bit. I think there's too much yellow on there. Uh, and the game was also relatively difficult to watch because Milan's kit is on top is mostly black, then Juve is mostly black with the black back. Uh, and the only thing that helped was were Milan's white pants, but it was actually, this was the... And I like the way that the kid, the kid, kid matchup went, uh, and the way Milan is playing with the white pants. Uh, I like that better than Milan with the, with the black pants. But I have to say, this was probably the Juve Milan clash that was hardest to watch from an um, optical point of view. As I said, Juve probably had a bit m the better chances. I felt that Milan are the more mature team, if that makes any sense. And then Calabria makes a cross and Giroud with a brilliant, absolutely brilliant header uh, scores it and makes it 1-0 ahead of the half. Maybe, just maybe a tad against the run of play. I can't say. However, in a sec, the second half, Milan just it was routinely played. Yes, there was at the very end, Danilo had a huge equalizing chance. But if the Milan attack plays it a little bit nicer, I think there was one misplaced ball by Giroud of all, all people who should look for Leao on the left instead of playing it outside to Salamakos. Uh, if you play play better, you can make it 2-2-0 two, two, two and you're walking home with an easy, easy win. So you had to, it was a little bit shaky then towards the end, but I think overall Milan played this home rather, rather safely, getting the second win over Juve. They only need, need a point to secure the Champions League spot with all the other results, with uh, Roma losing, with Atalanta lo losing, all falling in Milan's favor. They get the win at Juve and it is all safe, which is now also shown in the final standings. Uh, I don't need me to tell you how pleased I am with that result, obviously. Um, we see that there's a three-way spot, who goes into Europa League and who goes into the Conference League. Uh, Torino will not be able to catch Juve, of course, so uh, that is also So Juve finish worst-case scenario in seventh place with Inter winning the Coppa, Atalanta and Roma at the moment in the Europa League. However, um, 
Juve still could make it into the Europa League and Roma are winning the if they win the Europa League season they actually go into the Champions League so uh, there are quite a few options there as well on the bottom we see that Lecce are now safe they cannot be uh, caught and, and, and anymore with this late penalty by Col Colombo and Spezia are ahead of Hellas Verona who have the better goal difference but it doesn't count because the head-to-head -head with Spezia uh, holds that, that one and Spezia has an 80% chance of uh, getting relegated where Verona has only 20% at the moment we'll see that um, also reflected in the expected standings because both of them have rather tough games, but maybe Verona is more likely to get something at Milan, who is already safe, and Spezia at Roma. But honestly, that's only what the model is saying. I think if Roma win this Europa League, then they will not apply themselves. Milan will have a last home game. I don't know. This is for me very much in the air. Uh, it's between those two teams. Ellas have the better chance in this model because they have the higher rating as compared to Spezia. And uh, there's a bigger a deep difference between Ellas and Spezia than between Milan and Roma. However, the head-to-head -head for Spezia will probably make a big difference. So let's see about that. Other than that, there's not much to play for on the last match day. And I have the result, uh, the, all, all, all the fixtures here because I'm sure that Serie A is going to mumble jumble this this around i would expect that milan or uh, milan and roma will get the late kick 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 off and then just before six o'clock that napoli will play some doria to get their own spot for the celebrations or maybe they do this already in Saturday, and said and then the rest will be just distributed all over check the local listings in a way that's it from me from Serie A. please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video add anything uh below and yes i'll be talking to you soon bye Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!